We're now going to detour just a little bit about the rates of reactions and talk about how pressure affects rates of reactions. Now, this isn't particularly in your LO, but I would like to use this, uh, this as an opportunity to talk to you about it because, number one, it's practical in real life. Number two, it has applications in our next unit, 7.2, uh, in our next unit, on reversible reactions. So here we go, the effects of pressure on the rates of reaction. So here I have three instances. The first instance is that we have an equal amount of uh, reactants on all three of the vessels. And secondly, the temperature is the same, okay? Now, the only difference is, is that uh, we uh, have this valve at the top in which will be, which will be at different positions during the course of the reaction. So in the first one, it's all the way up there. Second one down a little bit in the middle. And the third one is really pressing it down. Now, what this is, is that uh, it affects the pressure, right? Uh, depending on the position of the valve, it will affect the pres pressure of the container. Now, what is pressure? Well, pressure is simply the kinetic force of all these uh, reactors inside banging against the wall of the container. That is pressure. So if you have a big volume, like because the valve is all the way up here, the pressure is not going to be as high as compared to the pressure down here when you press everything down uh, into a small volume. Now, <coughs> uh, pressure will increase as you go along here. Why? It's because when you have it up here, though there's more room and more space for the reactants to move about in that container. And as you go down and press it down, there's less room and less space for the reactants to go around. So it's, no matter where it goes, immediately, almost immediately, it be bumping against the uh, container wall and with each other as well. So that is it. All right. So let's try to graph out again how different pressures affect the rate of reactions. Again, as always, the amount of products that's made is always the same, okay? So uh, here, we don't really have a way of removing the products, but assuming that this is a one-directional reaction and that it's the, uh, the energy is exothermic, of course, and the energy to revert back to the reactants is very unknown, okay? So just put those claws in there to kind of protect us um, in terms of describing this. Okay, so uh, here we have, you know, lots of room for all the reactants to move about. And so it's moving about, moving about, moving about. And occasionally the reactants will bump each other. But again, most of them will not result in a collision. But after a long period of time, some bumps will result in reactions that are fruitful, okay? So uh, the, if you were to graph it out, it will look like what we had previously in our previous video lectures. Very low rate, decreases around here, and then flattens out as all the products are made. That's easy. All right, now, when we uh, increase the pressure by pressing down the valve, de in decreasing the volume, in essence, we have uh, allowed less room for the particles to move around. And so uh, most of it will be banging and colliding with each other more frequently. All right? So this is, in essence, increasing the concentration of the uh, reacting vessel because you're decreasing the volume. All right? So you increase the initial rate of reaction will definitely increase. And it will plateau out. and. plateau out as products are made, okay? So there you go. You have a high, initial high rate of reaction, decreases as the uh, reaction goes on, and then as you, as you finish making all your products, you will plateau out. So that's pretty easy. Now for the final step, is that you push the valve even lower. And now, in essence, there's really not a lot of room for the reactors to move about. And it's always, it's always a 
most of the time going to hit each other, okay? And this, in essence, is that you really put in the concentration on that. And this is, right? And so, um, you're really decreasing the volume. And so there's a lot of collisions going on. And because there's a lot more collisions going on, it results in more fruitful reactions. All right, so the initial rate will be quite high and it will plateau out pretty quickly. So there you go. Simple explanation again, using pressure and effect of reaction. And so generally when we speak, it's the same thing. When you increase the pressure, the chances of successful collisions increases, result, resulting in a higher rate of reaction, a higher initial rate of reaction. The rate at the beginning of the reaction is high because there's more reactants in there. And as the amount of reactants decrease during the course of the reaction, I think it's a slanted, there you go, over the course of the reaction, so will the chances of successful collisions. But again, the total amount of products will always remain the same. So, all right, so our final, second final video on this unit will be catalyst and then We'll talk about uh, photochemical reactions.